What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and I'm here at the Nerd Castle today doing a short series I think on Hero Siege which recently released onto I think Steam. It's been an iPhone app for a while as far as I know. I'm not completely sure about that, I'll have to check it out after the fact. So why am I doing this little series? Well, also what is it I suppose? I suppose we should hit all fronts and make sure that we know what we're talking about, when we're talking about, why we're talking about. So Hero Siege is a twin stick shooter and if you know anything about my game's preference, in the past, you'll know that I've talked about how Smash TV is one of my favorite games of all time. Well, this game kind of picks up where that leaves off and kind of mixes in a few elements of Binding of Isaac and some other roguelites as well. Although, I would call this an arena twin stick shooter before I call it anything else. It's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of things going along sort of in the vein of Gauntlet, Smash TV, all of those old games of the past. And I caught a flu or something over the last few days, and I haven't really been feeling up to doing any of our main series. Haven't been feeling so funny lately. I've just been kind of in the dumps as of the last few days, just a little bit ill, and so I figured I'd do this series as kind of a one-off. We'll have a little bit of fun with it, and see how far we can get. I don't think I'm gonna do a ton of episodes, I think I'll probably do maybe like three to six. Seems like a pretty good way to cover this. There's not a lot of stuff to talk about while we play through, but it is a lot of fun, and I think it'll spur a little bit of a conversation as we play the game, so let's go to play. And what you'll see here is there's a number of profiles. We're gonna go ahead and pick an empty one. We're gonna start over. So there's a number of characters that you get to choose from in this game. There's the Viking, the Pyromancer, the Marksman, the Nomad, and the Pirate who hasn't been released as of yet. So you've got two flavors of range and you've got two flavors of melee. Now, I haven't played the Viking as of yet, but I have played the Pyromancer, the Marksman, and the Nomad. I will say that by far the Pyromancer is my favorite. In fact, he is a very, very cool character, but the Marksman has a crossbow, he fires arrows that penetrate enemies, they go through and deal damage to everything they hit, the Nomad has a bunch of debuffs that he sort of applies as he attacks, that's right, your characters do level up and they accumulate gold as you play through, although you'll probably want to spend that as fast as you can because gold does not carry over in between your playthroughs, when you die you start over with nothing, but your character levels remain a la gauntlet basically. The Viking is melee, I don't really know what he does. I'll probably go with the Pyromancer on this one because I don't really feel like stressing myself or trying to learn anything new on this playthrough. I think I'd really just like to stick with the things that I know here. And so Pyromancer it is. And then we're gonna give him a name. We'll give him, I don't know, his name will be Skuma Steve. There we go. And so now that Skuma Steve has been created, you'll see that the other one's name is Usher, you know, because Usher had that song Let It Burn. I thought it was humorous to say the least. But in any case, let's start with Skuma Steve. And we do have the ability to rename him, to reset him. We could give him some buffs before we go in, but I'm just going to start out normal. We'll start on normal difficulty, and we can only go to the Forests of Terathiel, and you'll get a feel for what the game looks like now. So it's got the controls right there. You can pause it if you wanted to. My right stick, so I'm playing with an Xbox controller because I found this game to be quite, well, yeah, quite cumbersome when I was playing it with the keyboard. So I'd recommend you definitely plug in either an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller if you're going to play with it, or any type of twin stick gamepad. The left stick is going to control how we walk around, the right stick is going to control our direction of firing, and as you can see we're spewing flame in every bit of direction. We're essentially like a human flamethrower, we've also got a wonderful taste as somebody with a mohawk, I mean I have a mohawk right now, so as somebody who is a mohawk aficionado, I will say that he has magnificent taste when it comes to head accessories. And right there you'll see he exploded. The color of the enemy determines what kind of projectile they fire out when you kill them. Unfortunately, oh look, there's some of our, we have obstacles that are littered all throughout the battlefield that will either fire projectiles at us, they basically make our lives a little bit more difficult now. How awesome is that though, that they affect our enemies as well, so if there's spike traps you can rest assured that the spike trap will indeed kill your enemy, just as roundly as it will kill you, or just as pointily as it will kill you. If you've got yourself one of those little projectile launchers, it will affect the enemy just as much as it affects you, so a lot of this game is kind of maneuvering yourself into a position where you can get your enemy to be killed by a trap. Whether or not you kill the enemy in the first place, or a trap kills him, you still get the XP for every enemy that's destroyed. They still drop their loot, so you may as well do it. We leveled up in the last round, and I think what I want to do... Well, I didn't have time to level up. We can level up in between waves. At the bottom of the screen, you probably saw that there was a countdown. We've got a dune rat over there, which is essentially just a rat that has watched way too much sci-fi. He starts talking about spice, his eyes have been glowing recently, I don't really know. I just kind of ignore him and tone it out. In any case, we've got another big spider coming out from our right side. You can see the HP displays up above their heads. I don't think I really needed to explain that, but in any case, there it is. I have explained it a little bit. What is that upside down satanic pentagram in the middle of the screen? That is where the boss is going to spawn every six rounds. So every multiple of six, a boss is going to show up and try and wreck your day. They're going to get all up in there. They're going to be digging around in your man purse as though they wanted to find your movie theater candy. I'm going to level up. We can press the Y button or whatever appropriate button 
it is on your gamepad, on mine it's the Y button, and I'm going to increase my attack speed because I feel like we're firing really, really slowly right now. We also have this minimal talent tree over here. The first talent that we can grab is called Meteor, and it gives you a chance that each cast will give you a Meteor that passes through your enemies. I'm going to put two points in there, now we have a 7% chance of firing a super awesome Meteor, and so hopefully that'll pop up soon. There it is right there. And so now you guys know what my Meteor is going to look like. And this game, pretty much, you've seen all there is to see of this game so far. I do find the game to be a lot of fun, though. I played it for probably about an hour non-stop last night when I should have been sleeping. It pretty much jeopardized my chances of going to class this morning. Then again, I don't think it really matters. Anybody that's been a senior in college will know that going to class is sort of relative. Like, you don't necessarily need to do it anymore. Once you're a senior, all of your professors basically just give you these projects that you work on for the entire year. And you kind of just do it on your own time. Let's go ahead and crack open some of these crates. Now, the levels are randomized to a certain extent, so certain things will be in the same spot every single time you play this level. Other things will be moved around, such as these chests. I don't have a key, so I can't open that chest, but if we can find ourselves one of the little silver keys or iron keys or whatever metal they're made out of, we'll be able to crack that thing open and get ourselves some treasure. That Dune Rat is enraged. Somebody has insulted his favorite series. Somebody has had the gall to say that Battlestar Galactica is better. How dare you, sir? How dare you? And so he is now enraged, which gave him special superpowers. It's all good though because we dispatched him. We have definitely removed all of his patches. He's also got some spines. I don't know if there's like a nuclear like radiation waste dump around here somewhere. I mean, we've all seen Aqua Teen Hunger Force and we know that radiation doesn't necessarily give you powers. If it did, I'd be rolling around in it right this second. But in any case, he seems to have grown himself some spines. We've leveled up one more time. We've got, how long do we have before the next wave? 10 seconds at the top of the screen. You can see we've got ourselves about 2,500 gold. I'm going to take this time. We've got two points to allocate. I'm going to keep going with attack speed and then also continue putting things into Meteor because attack speed is one of my favorite things in games like this. Anytime I play a twin stick shooter, I focus on attack speed first because I really like feeling as though I'm a human machine gun. Just rat a tat a tat a rat a tat a brakata brakata. You know how it goes. That's how we do it in the Pyromancer hood. Most Pyromancers come from the hood. I don't know what it is about, like, the ghetto or having bars, like, up on eight-story windows, but it makes people really feel as though they could spew fire from their hands and grow mohawks and also paint green things on their face and have super pimping shoulder pads of some sort. I'm going to assume that those are furs that he's rocking right now, so apparently he was pretty successful at Pyromancer pimping. I don't really know his backstory, but I'm going to assume that since he can afford himself a mink, He's got his money tightened up. His money is absolutely right at the moment, rather than being left. I'm going to finish off the last couple blood maggots. Why these maggots choose to feast themselves down on blood, I don't really know. I haven't asked them what their motive is. I feel as though it's probably just mostly for intimidation. Of all the things you could eat, blood would be one of those that I'd be like, that's pretty nasty, and I bet you also have hep or something ridiculous. We've leveled up yet another time. This time, I'm going to continue going down that attack speed path. I really do like attack speed. I think you guys... Oh, we have a boss. Let's go ahead and handle that boss. Now, one of the nice things about the Pyromancer is that against... I don't know who we're going to get. The bosses are randomized. KO the Sapling. I've never gotten this boss before. And so I feel as though that skull is probably going to take me out almost instantly if I run into it. But we managed to kill him right off the bat. Ooh, we got a statue. Okay, and the statue gave us plus two to our permanent swiftness. So as you see, as you play through the game, there's going to be random statues and things like that that give you permanent boost to your playthrough. Now, when you die, you will lose those, but you keep your levels. And if we go to the center, now that we've killed ourselves a boss, there's a couple things you want to note. We got ourselves some crystals. If you look at the left side of the screen, you'll see three icons. The one is for keys. The middle one... Oh, what in the hell is that? The middle one, okay, just try to spawn a bunch of traps on me without saying anything. The middle one is crystals. You earn those for killing bosses, and you spend crystals on, like, permanent hats and things you can wear into combat. There's one that's, like, Pyramid Head. There's one that's Link's Cowl. It's just a bunch of video game references, essentially. I think Mario's hat is in there somewhere. And then the bottom one is a crystal key. Use the crystal key to open crystal chests, which give you permanent loot like this breastplate here. The rusted battle armor. So we've been given 10 armor permanently. If you look at our stats right there, it's applied the plus 10. And so we'll keep track of that. Swiftness isn't a stat that you can have yet. And so swiftness, just be aware that if you get a plus to swiftness, it makes you faster. If we press the X button, this is a good time to do this, by the way, because we have a little bit of a lull in the combat. This is the shop interface. We can buy temporary stamina, strength, whatever you need for the round. I think it's only for that wave. I don't know specifically how it works. We can buy more crystal keys using crystals. We can get health potions. We can get damage potions. You can only carry one potion at a time, so you can't over imbibe, so you want to be careful about the way you spend there. However, I tend to keep a swiftness potion on me at all times because there are mobs that you want to outrun and if they kind of bear down on you you're absolutely 100% done like dinner 
So I will buy a Swiftness Potion, which you'll see is on the right hand side. We've got a little square with a green potion in it. I can now use that with my right shoulder button whenever I want to. Let me level up one more time. I'm going to go for a little bit of damage. I was hoping we would get a permanent item that would be a little bit better. The item that we got is not so good, but it does give us 10 damage mitigation. Now there's a first key that we've grabbed, so we want to keep an eye out for golden chests. And there's one right there. This map is going to have a new enemy that we have to be aware of called the Wendigo. The Wendigo is very, very fast and actually quite a problem. The Wendigo can put you in a situation where you will be basically 10 foot under pretty quickly. The Skeletal Champion, those do a little charge attack and we finished off the first wave. Now as you can see there's a lot more hazards in this. There's a guillotine right here. I'm gonna try and dope. I was not so good at dodging the guillotine unfortunately. So let's run through there one more time. And the red orbs on the ground are health. So I would prefer to find a bit more health before we go any further. I don't know if I will find one. But let's just bring on... No, let's not bring on the next round. I'm going to try and kill off these crates. I don't know why they're stocking their crates with blood. That's one of those organizational things where I think you need to talk to the staff sergeant or whoever's there. The gunnery sergeant or whoever it is. The quartermaster. That's who I'm thinking of. The quartermaster. Oop, there's some health right there. I'm going to try and grab it. That spider with a crucifix on it. That's a black widow that's found Jesus, I suppose. But we need to grab those little red orbs to get our health back. I'm also going to try and stay out of the way of any hazards that are coming down. As I was saying, I don't really know why they're stocking all of our crates with blood and gold. Like, those two things don't necessarily go together in the overall scheme of life. Like, it's not very often that I attempt to see blood and gold, like, in the same chest. However, it could be one of those situations where, like, when you're moving, you have that one box left over at the end that just has all your random junk in it. Apparently, they just had a mass, like, amount of receptacles of blood left, and also they had loads and loads of gold left. And they were like, well, we've got a bunch of square receptacles left, and while the gold kind of stacks properly inside of that, the blood, not so sure. In any case, they've done a pretty good job at making sure it's sealed, so... I suppose we're not going to hold it against them. I wouldn't want a crate of blood held against me anyways. I'm paranoid about diseases. Mm -mm. Oh, we got a Wendigo coming at us from above. Let's see if we can't get a couple of meteors off on him. I forgot to level up, so that's definitely going to affect us negatively in this round. We want to keep an eye out and make sure that we're killing enemies appropriately. However, we did luck out a little bit. Whereas we got an armor buff from our first boss, that's not the best item that I would have asked for from our first boss, as we are trying to make a long run right here. We definitely want to turn this thing into kind of a high aerobic exercise. We want to make sure that it lasts a while so that this series isn't over really, really quickly. But the swiftness was really, really good, so we're able to run fast. So on one hand, we got armor, which I haven't noticed as being necessarily very useful. But on the other hand, we got swiftness, which is really, really good. And I'm talking about hands here as though we're a mutant. So I'm like, on the other hand, on the other hand, on the other hand, we have gone fully around the hands. Loads and loads of hands. It's getting very, very Mortal Kombat-y up in here. This trap is fantastic for luring bosses across, by the way. You should definitely try and bait bosses into those if you can. If indeed you are able. I took a little bit of damage there from something. I don't know what it was. A bomb just fell on my head, which is insanely bad. So now we're low on health. Luckily, there were some health pickups right there. I'm going to try and drag some of those unfortunate souls across that stone Aztec-looking trap over there and then really hope that I proc a meteor soon because that Wendigo ran me down really, really quickly. Although I suppose it is easy to assume that he wouldn't have ran me down at all if he was doing it slowly. So there it is. There's a little bit of an idiosyncrasy in that statement, I guess. I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass at this point. It's definitely got kind of a... <laughs> Thing going on so that's what I assume it would sound like if an ass could talk it's kind of like the ass people from South Park where they have the ass heads so like, Darren I don't know what we're doing god I haven't watched South Park in a long time I used to be a South Park guru you know how some people can like quote episodes from the Simpsons for you and things and they can tell you what season and what episode it was from I was like that for a while I have all the box sets up to season 9 and back in my heyday I could quote and tell you what episode anything from South Park was up to season 9. Like any episode, you would just do any quote and I'd be like, oh that's from season 4 episode 3 and I could tell you the name of the episode. I was really, really into South Park back in the day. Like to an unhealthy extent. Then again, who wasn't back then I suppose. But then I, I have this tendency to take like my nerd fandoms to whole new levels if I'm given the leeway to. Like if you give me an inch I will definitely take a mile when it comes to the allocation of funds for goofy stuff. I'm gonna give myself some speed and that's exactly right there why I keep swiftness potions on me and we may die. Oh we escaped okay so we may not die. We got out of there with four health left so what we want to do- ooh I almost ate a bullet right there. 
Definitely getting a little bit tense. He's firing things at me. I'm getting nervous about it. We've got a faceless horror. Okay. So if I can isolate for myself, you want to watch the drop blobs, right? Oh, I got hit by a fly for 17 damage and it killed me. I didn't see him right there. I was trying to cut through the middle, but unfortunately, that's the way she goes. Let's jump back in one more time so that you can see kind of the longevity of the game. Now, one thing that I strongly dislike about the whole thing... I don't really know why the game is lagging for me, but it decided to lag. One thing I don't really like is that there's no... You can't pick up from the round that you want. You've got to start over from the beginning. So as you'll see, we're on wave one again. And I've played this out to about wave 22 or 23 before I've died. I haven't played a whole lot. I was hoping we'd go this entire episode without dying, but I decided to do something risky right there and paid for it. We'll get back to killing dune rats, and unfortunately I don't have any recyclable jokes to play around with. But, at least we're showing the game off on the plus side. There are some other things that we want to keep an eye out for. So as we play through the game, there are hidden dungeons. So every now and again, oh good, a rat busted out of the ground and took us out. It's one of those gorilla rats. I'm going to go ahead and trigger round two just quickly without even thinking about it because we do want to make good time here. Unfortunately, having eaten up a large portion of my time dying and doing dumb stuff, sometimes you're going to have to... That's the thing I would like to mention is even though you die sometimes, like, I've never heard anybody talk about not dying in this game. There is a hardcore mode if you're just super manly and you have, like, all kinds of chest hair and, like, one of those beers that looks like it belongs on a 1910 Explorer and you smoke from a pipe. And I just walked right into that one. I didn't even try and move. It's one of those things that's kind of a symptom of my lethargy from my recent illness. Hopefully it goes away. I am really hoping. I had dodged it for so long. Like, everybody on campus has been sick for just a huge amount of time. And I had dodged it for so long. Like, weeks and weeks and weeks I had managed to not get sick. And then finally, I don't know, I bet it's a freshman's fault. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to blame it on a freshman. Because it seems like freshmen get sicker than everybody else. They're always the ones that are like hacking up a lung as though they're gonna die. Like, you know that cough that people from the 1800s would get? Like cholera? That's what I always imagine freshmen coughing like. They cough like three, like little children essentially. Like, you know how sick like two year olds get? It's the same thing. Like, your first year at college, you're exposed to like all kinds of diseases that you haven't seen in a long ass time. Especially if you come from another area, you're getting introduced to new strains of stuff that you never even knew existed in the first place. Now that we've gotten through, like, what? What wave are we on? I don't know. We probably should level up, though. Let's give ourselves some more attack speed. And we've unlocked a new ground, or we've unlocked a new chain of our talent tree here. It's called Blazing Ground, and what it does is it gives a chance of leaving kind of this little fire explody spot on the ground. We're not going to do it for now because I want to max this out at, like, 15% first. Then we'll go over here. Now, that chance right there, that 6%, might seem a little bit low. But I do want to clarify how that works. It's a 6% as your fireball travels over any ground square. So, that's not to mean that the ground is ground up like beef, that's to say that as your, like, little bolt crosses over the ground, every single square that it crosses has a 6% chance of spawning one of those little flame pits, and when an enemy walks across it, it does do a sizable little fistful of damage, so it's definitely not something to be scoffed at. These little arrow traps right here rotate in between rounds, in case you weren't aware, they will, so this one's facing down, on the next round it could be facing a different direction definitely becomes dangerous. I think they do a fairly sizable amount of damage. I want to be careful with these trees. You can fire your projectiles through any fashion of obstacle. So the only thing that stops them are actual walls like palisades and things, if I'm remembering correctly. You do get triggerable abilities. So if you were looking for things like, oh, I don't know, like some of the books and some of the abilities that you have in Binding of Isaac, those are indeed in the game. That's a huge explosion to be triggered by one guy. Later on, we can flip switches and it'll turn on. You see that sparkly statue right there? It's been well polished. That, that He's in a great mood. After I get polished, I'm in a great mood too. That statue's in a tremendous mood right now. And if you flip a number of switches in a level, once you get a bit further out, those statues come to life and they help defend you and they act sort of like a pet or like a stationary turret. It's very, very cool and useful. We have a devouring worm over here. And he didn't do anything. I thought he was going to shoot fireballs everywhere when he died because of his coloration, but he didn't. He did, however, spawn a bunch of little minions, which is okay. The minions don't tend to be very terrifying, so they can definitely... They look like they're from Splatterhouse. You remember those little worms from Splatterhouse that would jump around and you hit them with a 2x4? That was one of those games that I wasn't allowed to have when I was a kid, and then I got it anyways. Just kind of by happenstance. I think a friend gave it to me or something. We're going to continue increasing that up to 15%. I'm going to go for a bit more damage now. I'm not going to focus too much on defensive stats because I feel like the Pyromancer is sort of lackluster with regards to defense anyways. One of those things, his defense is deficient. Definitely needs to get the neighbors together and figure out who... 
Ooh. And as you can see, some of the things from Diablo 3 are into like those little laser traps. And believe you me, they are just as deadly here. They will absolutely tear you a new one. They will rip you in half laser mode style. And very few things rip in half like a laser. A little different. That's the cactus. And so the cactus is kind of cool. What the cactus does is when you kill an enemy, a cactus spawns from their corpse and then blows up shortly thereafter. Oh god. That thing is definitely unfriendly. Forget you, pal. I wish I could blow those up, but you can't. I'm gonna take a swift look around the map just to make sure I haven't missed anything. The cactus is a little bit of a letdown. Like, the cactus is not an incredible relic. Like, there are red like there are relics in this game, much like Binding of Isaac, where when you pick them up, you're like, yeah, my game is gonna be super easy for the next 25 minutes. This is not one of those relics. It's one of those random relics that's alright. Every now and again, you'll catch an enemy with its little AoE explosion, but it's not necessarily as useful as some of the things that I'd like to pick up. I guess we'll just head for the portal now. I'm gonna try not to get arrowed in between here and there. I definitely keep myself out of any strong badass situations, although I've gotten a little bit lost. The map is like the size of my thumb, and I've still managed to get myself completely and totally discombobulated here. Let's play the next grouping of waves. I think we've got about 10 minutes left in the episode. We should be able to make it. And what you'll do is, if you watch and pay attention, I'm going to buy myself a crystal key here. And so we've got a crystal key. You can buy a, a chest there, and it's given us the War Zeppelin, which shoots homing missiles. I think that's a pet. Now the potions have a random effect each time you pick them up. That one gave us a armor increase and that'll stay around until we use another potion. As you can see our pet Zeppelin is now following us around the map and he should help us by throwing a little bit of artillery around. That Satan statue gave us minus 40 to strength which means we're basically going to hit like that kid in class who breathes really heavily and has some kind of blood disorder. That's basically who we are now. Luckily, we've got a pretty cool War Zeppelin that's backing us up, so that should allocate a little bit of extra damage to our personage. And it's alright. I mean, who doesn't want a sentient little boat of doom following them around? That's a pretty cool pet to have in the first place. If I had to choose between, like, a dog or whatever, I would definitely go with the War Zeppelin. We've got a magic potion right there. It gave us a damage boost. So our damage is now at plus 40, and our armor is at plus 10. All I, all of those I am completely and totally satisfied with. What does that obelisk do? I've never seen that. It looks like it does something in between rounds. So I think next time we have a round open, what we'll try and do is go back and see if we can't figure out what its quest does. And I think there's the distinct possibility we could get ourselves some pretty cool loot if we manage to complete the quest. The game does have a lot of little random things like that where there will be dungeons around. So you see this trap door right here? This will open up in between rounds to a dungeon that's very, very difficult, but if you complete it, basically lots of insta-give situations, and if you can survive it, there's typically some very cool loot at the end, like loot you absolutely 100% want. And so sometimes it's worth the risk, so if you're having a playthrough that's a little bit worse than the one we have going on right now where you have nothing to lose, like you can tell you're going to die anyways, it may be worth your while just to get in there and see if you can... Get yourself some freebie gear just by dodging astutely. Essentially proving that you have mad skills to pay the medieval bills. There's another devouring worm over here. I'm going to keep putting explosives on him and we finished up the map. Now then, let's go check out the obelisk. It doesn't look like it's lit up again. Can I destroy it? It's looking as though it's degrading, which is kind of strange. It's definitely spitting out those insults. It's such a degrading obelisk. Just having it around makes me feel as though I'm just walking through town with my pants down. Which, as I learned in the fifth grade, is not a great way to make friends. In fact, it will get you sent to the principal's office. And ridiculous enough, they will charge you with, like, sexual harassment. Which you wouldn't think that a ten-year-old who has no concept of such sexual things could be tasked with that. But it's a crazy world we live in, and, you know, honestly, people get a little bit cray-cray with the punishments. I thought it was hilarious. Then again, little Mary Sue's parents definitely had a few words to say about it after the fact. You ever have that happen? What am I being hit by right now? That arrow that's hidden behind that sign? The opacity of some of these obstacles that are hitting me right now. Definitely a little bit worrisome. Got a couple more stat points to put in. We're dealing 7 damage per shot. God, that is just... bad. Really, really bad. I'm going to continue going with attack speed. We have nothing else to lose at this point. Luckily, our missiles are doing pretty well. We've got him over there. Is he sh what is he shooting right now? He's always got some kind of projectile. He's always got something that he's firing from his orifice at me. 
And one thing I've learned about people pointing orifices at me is that you should probably pay attention and make sure you dodge whatever comes out. We finished off another round. I don't know which round we're in. We've leveled up again. Now the nice thing about the composition of those arrow turrets is that they've created a nice little box grid around us that the monsters are having a huge amount of trouble getting through. I guess I'll go back with damage again. Once we get reset, oh, let's go, there we go, 15%, so I'm happy. Let's back off now and get hit by another arrow because I'm a noob. And that skull is actually not that terrifying. In fact, he's already dead. So as you can see, I really, really like the Pyromancer with good reason. His little slow meteor strikes do low, oh, there's another arrow right there. Damn you, arrow trap. Damn you to a fiery, arrowy hell. I don't know what hell arrows go to, but I sincerely hope that it is like the hottest type of place. The blazing boots with a flaming trail. So there it is right there. You see that what we're leaving behind us now? That thing we're leaving behind is also the thing that we proc from our meteor strikes. I'm going to open up all those treasure chests because I have an extra key. We'll pick up that one right there and then we'll try and open up the chest beyond the guillotine. Which sounds something like a C.S. Lewis novel. The chest beyond the guillotine. And so now that we've picked it up, the guillotine on creatine. That sounds like a weightlifting manual for guillotines. In any case, we've made it to wave 12. I'm going to go ahead and pause the game right here and I'm going to cut off the episode. So my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for an episode of Hero Siege. You should be playing this game. It's very, very cool. I'm going to leave it paused so that I don't backfire on me. Take care out there, everybody, and I will see you next time. If you want the game, look down below in the description. I'll have all the information there. Bye, guys.